Hi, in this video we are going to continue our discussion on common and useful string methods. The next method that I want to look at is starts with and then also ends with. And so I'm just going to clear from the last time here, clear the console, and uh, let's in introduce a string, we'll call it spam, and we'll just say uh, hello world again. Hello world, like this. And we're going to check out the starts with method. And so I'm going to type spam dot starts with. Okay, and then I'm going to pass the method an input. And I'm going to ask it, does it start with hello? Right? And uh, it's going to return. Uh, what did I do here? Starts, start, oops, I didn't spell this. There should be an S there. It starts with, starts with. And it returns true because my string spam does start with hello, right? And if I asked it, hey, does it start with, um, you know, just how about hell? Does it start with hell? Yeah, it starts with hell. Uh, does it start with uh, one, two, three? False. No, it doesn't, right? So you get a handle of, you can, you can easily get a handle of what's, what this uh, starts with method is doing. And uh, there's also ends with. So spam dot uh, ends with. And we can say, hey, does this thing ends with does this thing end with um, world? Right? Exclamation point. And it will return true. Yeah, it ends with. Or we could just ask it, hey, is this an exclamation? Like does it does it end with an exclamation point? Yeah. Does it end with world? without an exclamation point. No, it doesn't. All right, so that returns false. All right, I'm going to clear this. Uh, and then we're going to move on to a couple more methods, the join and the split method. So actually, I'm just going to comment over here um, in the editor some, some of these methods that we're looking at today. So this is, we just looked at starts with, okay, and then ends with. All right, and now we're going to look at join and split, which which are uh, opposites actually. All right, so let's say I had uh, two, or maybe a list, maybe a list. Um, maybe my list is like uh, list. We'll call it LST or LS, I guess. LS, and my list is uh, just uh, maybe some animals like cat, dog, and uh, elephant. Okay, so there is my list, ls, and what I can do is say, I can join these things together, and I can put um, as a string, like what, what do I want as the joining character or characters. So maybe I want to join these things with a comma and then a space. So I, I make a string. Remember, this video is on strings, not lists. So I make a string, comma, space, and then I'm going to dot that string with. So here comes the method now. And the method is going to be join. And then I'm going to give it as an input the list. And we'll see what that returns. And you see it returns a single string, a single output, right, with the items from my list concatenated, you know, joined by a comma then followed by a space. Exactly what I told it to do. So that's kind of that's kind of neat. And I could also like I could join it uh, without the comma with just a space. Cat, dog, elephant. I could join it with anything I want, any string that I want, like abc, abc.join. So here's the uh, cat, abc, dog, abc, elephant. All right, so that's 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 kind of interesting. Actually, I, what I'm going to do here is uh, save that output. So I'm going to save it as a variable, maybe eggs. Eggs equals abc.joinLS. And so now if I print eggs... Uh, you see that I've got eggs saved as cat abc dog abc elephant. And the reason I'm going to do that is to show you the next method, which is the opposite of what I just did, which is the split method. So what I can do is I can give it a string, eggs, dot, and I'm going to say split. 
split. That's the method, and I'll give it some sort of uh, input, and I'm going to give it ABC. I'm going to tell it to split on ABC, and what that returns is the uh, cat, dog, elephant, right, in a list. It returns a list, split on ABC. So you can see how now that is the opposite of join. That's pretty useful. So you could, you could say something like, um, you know, you could give it a string like, my name is um, Amanda. Amanda, so there's my string, and I'm going to say split, and maybe I want to split on the space. It turns out the space is actually the default of this method, so it will return my name is Amanda. This is a common way that this split function or split method is be, is used. It's it's used to kind of um, uh, uh, parse or extract the the words in a sentence. So you can see how this has found all of the words in that sentence. All of those words became items now in a list. Um, if you don't understand this default, you know, well we did talk about default parameters, so the default is a white space, so I could actually just give it white space as well, and that will return my name is Amanda, right, items in a list. Another way that this uh, this split method is used is to parse um, sen sentences, individual sentences. So for example, if I had a string, let's say um, a long string, like a multi-long multi-line string like um, you know uh, dear Amanda um, my cat's name is Roxy sincerely Tessa okay there's my multi-line string and I can, what I can do here is uh, I can ask it to spam dot split. I'm going to split on the new line character, right? So that that's interesting to us. If we split it on the new line character, you see what is returned is uh, is each line, of course, dear Amanda, comma, and then the next item in the list is my cat's name is Roxy, period. Then the next item in the list is sincerely, comma, and the next item in the list is Tessa. Let me give you another example. Bacon equals, so imagine imagine instead of like a letter like this, we would have some sort of, uh, you know, report or something like, this is sentence one, right? And then, uh, um, then in this line, this line, I make another sentence. Uh, this is my concluding sentence. Something like this. And again, if we do bacon dot split, and I'm split on the new line character, you see that I get those sentences. Uh, as items in my output. So that's really nice. So like I could save this. I could say save this as a list like sentence list equals bacon dot split on the new line character. And now my sentence list is what you'd expect. Right? It's got these things in there. And so now I could ask, well, what is the first sentence? Sentence list at the zeroth index, and that returns this is sentence one. Uh, sentence list on the first index. In this line, I make another sentence, and then uh, sentence two. You know, this is my concluding sentence. So that that can be really useful to parse like emails or uh, reports, documents, things like that. And then uh, the last method that I want to uh, cover in this video is the partition method. Partition method. So I'm just going to clear this, give myself some more space. And what we're going to say is how about spam equals, I'll define a new string, we'll say hello world. Okay, like this. And I'm going to ask it to partition 
and I'm going to give the method an input. I'm going to ask it to partition it on the capital W. And what it returns then is a tuple. Okay, so you want to keep that in mind. It returns a tuple, and the tuple contains hello, right? What was and the space and the comma. What was you know what was before the capital W. Then it 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 returns the capital W, and then it returns everything after the uh, the capital W. Um, so and we can we can test this on a bunch of different things. Like I can ask it to uh, to partition after world like that and you see it returns uh, hello comma space and then the partitioning string which is world and then it returns empty because there's nothing after uh, world okay so this can be useful as well so uh, let, let me just give you another example um, we can we can ask it to partition on the empty character or not the empty character, the white space. So we're going to say spam dot partition uh, on that space, and then you see what it returns is this tuple. It's got hello, and it's got um, the white space as the partitioning character, and then world. Now let's suppose for a second there was no. Oh no, no. Yeah, that's what I want to do in this example. Okay, spam dot partition, and of course I could save this tuple like. Uh, with what any any variable that I want like um, partition tuple or something equals spam dot partition okay like this and so now if I print I've got some butterfingers today partition tuple right if I if I print that you'll see it now it's saved as partition tuple hello white space world nice now uh, one of the common ways that the partition method is used is to actually unpack these things remember our unpacking of tuples so what we could say is something like this um, before um, and then the partition part and then after because see it's returning three things it's returning what was before the partition the partitioning character and after so we're going to unpack those in one command before partition after equals spam dot partition and then we're going to partition it on the character on the uh, blank space hit enter now it's unpacked the tuple so uh, we, we can look at before before is just hello comma right the partition character is the white space and after is equal to world so again that's very useful for us uh, to parse uh, uh, strings or something like emails or reports or something like that all right and in the next video we're going to look at just a few more methods that we can use on strings thank you